commercials, all right? The shows are there to suck you in and sit you down so you see some commercials. <laughs> the shows are a lie. The commercials are the truth. They're the only thing that's complete that's not interrupted. Tabletop is a fabulous play playing at the American Place Theater main stage, and we're so pleased to have the lead here with us tonight. I agree with Susan. Tabletop is a terrific play. It's very funny. It's very mean. It's about the making of television commercials. And Rob Bartlett plays a tyrannical director who manipulates, browbeats, attacks his poor staff. Mr. Bartlett uh, is a man of, uh, of many talents. He writes the Don Imus radio program. He does those terrific parodies that one you of, hear. One of the writers. Yes. One of the writers. But you do all those great song parodies. The song parodies, yes. I have to say claim to those. And you're a stand-up comic. And you're the author of that... Uh, short-lived masterpiece, More to Love, that was on Broadway a few seasons back. Yes, yes. Short-lived, <laughs> I think, is a kind way of putting it. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to Theater Talk, <laughs> Rob Bartlett. Uh, first of all, let's congratulate you, congratulate you on the performance. It's really terrific in tabletop. Oh, thank you. Tell us a little bit about, tell us about the play for people who haven't seen this, and also tell us about your character and what's going on in his life when this play starts off. Um, the play is, is um, really like a day in a life. It, it takes place in real time. It's a it's a hundred minutes in the day of this group of people who uh, really create tabletop television commercials for a living. And tabletop is the, um, the area of the business that deals with the product shots, the, the close-up uh, still life photography. Right. The uh, shining the, apple and the grapes. And exactly. The, uh, uh, the pouring of the, the milk onto the cereal, those types of right. things. Um, the real meat and potatoes part of the commercial as far as my character Marcus is concerned. Um, it's not the actors, it's the, it's the, it's the hamburger and, and the pickles. <laughs> and uh, it, it concerns Marcus Gordon, the, the part that I play, who is uh, one of the top five, let's say, guys in the business. But starting to go. Yeah, he's, uh, he's losing his grip. He's, mm -hmm. uh, he's kind of um, entering that dinosaur area. He's, uh, he's not really keeping up with uh, there Chicago. There are young kids coming up the ladder. This young whippersnapper in Chicago is really... Uh, you know, blowing the lights out and, and doing all this fun, exciting stuff. And, and it, it totally goes against Marcus's sensibilities. And uh, uh, he's very, very reluctant to change. And, and basically, nothing is going right. And, and the back's against the wall. It's a day of reshoots, and that's coming out of his pocket. And one thing leads to another. And, and, there are, and it's, a, it's a day at work, basically, with a group of people. And a parable people. about the magic of show business. Yeah, and, and just the kind of what it's like to work in, in, the, in, in any type of situation when you have a group of people who have to join forces to come up with anything. Right. And we should give credit, of course, to the playwright, whom we haven't mentioned, Rob Ackerman. Rob Ackerman. Who worked in tabletop himself, so he yes. brings a great experience to, uh, to this play and knowledge of the subject. There is another dynamic going on in this play, which I, I find interesting. One of the characters, the intern, I think he is, a uh, very nice performance by Jeremy Webb. We're playing Ron. He is an extremely talented, artistic, almost a genius kid mm -hmm. who saves your bacon mm -hmm. uh, on this show. But he's undisciplined. Mm -hmm. And the juxtaposition between your character, who, you know, once upon a time had that raw talent, that genius too, but is now maybe sold out in a way. He's got the Mercedes, he's got the house in the Absolutely. Connecticut. And you, I, you sense the resentment he has for this young kid who's got all the talent he once had, but is unencumbered with all of the concerns that you have now that you're a businessman. Yeah, I mean, every, everything that, that Marcus says in the play about his, uh, uh, his Contemporaries, the people who uh, when you know were came up along with him, and or people who are, for for instance, the the guy from Chicago. This is the the new whippersnapper that's coming to me. He's like me, but better. Right. In a way, I think that's one of the reasons why he's so irritated with Ron is because Ron reminds him of, of him. Right. At one time, he was able to just entertain his artistic sensibilities, and and that one part, you know, it's left brain, right brain, right. you know, f fighting against each other. But the kid doesn't have any discipline. Right. And in order to be in the world that you're in, to be a professional, he is going to have to be disciplined. And when he fucks up too many times, you fire him. Yeah. You recognize the talent, but you fire him. You can, you can say fucks up? Is that, oh, that's what I said on, uh, yes, we can say it. Cool. I thought this you was like cable or something. But, it's PBS, but, but, you can but, say whatever. You know, I'm now going to have to write a memo. To <laughs> All right. I'm just very excited about it. I was able to say this on no, TV. No. Well, we can say it in the conversation. We forget the TV cameras. That's fine. Right. No, I'm very so, excited. Though. So back the Charlie the... Rose audience is flipping the chat. What's going on? What the hell is going on? They're saying the F word. I wanted to want to think about theater. All right, we won't say it again. I'm, I'm the, sorry. Back to the lack of discipline. Uh, now, I do want to ask you, as I, I, I'm a fan of the, uh, the, uh, the IMAS program, and as I was watching this 
dysfunctional family with this tyrannical head. I was wondering, is there a parallel here with what goes on in the Don Imus program? You know, Do you base uh, your performance on your own boss? It would be really easy to, to say that, <laughs> that that were the case, and it would be really fun to say that that were the case, because that's certainly the way we portray him when we're you right. know on the air together. Exactly. Um, the, I think there, there's a certain... Uh, amount of that in any given situation with people. I mean, there's, there's always going to be a boss and there's always going to be underlings and there's, there's right. especially in a creative endeavor, there's going to be butting heads or whatever. Um, there really are no similarities between Imus and Marcus. I mean, I don't really see Marcus having any altruistic <laughs> aspects whatsoever. I don't there's see no Marcus. Ranch to be I was going to say, <laughs> Marcus is not going to be starting any ranch for kids with cancer, that much I can tell you. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but the dynamic, but the family dynamic, I would say, is very is similar there, because yeah. I think, you know, the when you look at all the people that um, Imus has surrounded himself with, you know, I mean, Charles has been there for 20, 25 years. Right. Larry Kenny's been there for, uh, you know, Bernard has been there for thirteen. It, we've all been with him for so long. I mean, obviously, it's it's, it's because there's a reason, you know, right. that you know. Right. No, I think that's right. I mean, that is definitely the, as you say, the dynamic in any creative environment. Somebody, like much like a theater talk, somebody has to be the boss here and order everybody else around. Uh, and have loyal, and Susan knows and loyal it's her. assistants. <laughs> <laughs> she knows what she has to do. Uh, um, now, I, I, t tell me about your day. I mean, you 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 write for the radio program. You're on the radio program. You're doing your stand-up comedy stuff, mm -hmm. and you're performing every night. I mean, mm -hmm. when do you have time? When do you have time to write? When do you have time to do anything? Um, the, the writing is, uh, I basically do the writing the same time I do my sleeping in the car, you know, <laughs> driving to and from the theater and, and the radio station. Um, it's, it's like anything else, you know, you, you, you try and compartmentalize your time, you mm -hmm. know, and you drink a lot of coffee and, uh, you know, do you have a, a lot of ginseng. When More to Love received a, a, a less than totally favorable reception on Broadway. Talk I about avert, talk about you, you from Avert your eyes was the quote. Okay, let's not pussy fool around it over here. It was pan. It, it was no. stopped. It was, it was murdered. Out. It was butchered. They tore it apart, Lips Michael. On limb. And you know, and I must you know, tracks your activities. You were back out there with, with the, what is it, the Bartlett's the, the, and your act. Hey. And you were back out there so fast with something you else. I was very impressed. You, know, yeah. it's just, you weren't licking your wounds. This isn't for long. kids. Yeah. You know, this is, you know, this is. <laughs> no, it's a tough business. And L Lily Tomlin says it's not show art, it's show business. Right. You know, and <laughs> but but you got to be honest with us, though. I mean, when, when you write this play, More to Love Comes On, and Peter Marks in the New York Times just completely destroys it, and it's gone in a couple of days. I mean, there's take something out of it. Oh, I mean, absolutely. It must destroy no, you I, I, I invested many, many years uh, of time in it. Um, we got off track somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where. I don't, I don't think it ever really should have been considered a play because it was never in my intention to write a play. Mm -hmm. It was to uh, have some kind of a structure around my stand-up act, which is basically what we had put together. A little bit of a storyline, something that was going to, you know, just tie things together. Right. Um, and then, you know, as anything else, you, you get a bunch of different minds together, and producers and creative people, and, and, and everyone starts stirring the pot, and at some point, things, you know, I, I was very proud of Mortal Love. I mean, and I, I and, and to this day, people come up to me and say, you know, I saw it, and I don't understand why. I don't understand why. I, don't, I, I loved it. Peter Marks. Well, That's you know, why. no, three words, avert your eyes. Those are the three <laughs> words, okay? Um, but, you know, it's, you, you, you try not to, because some of the same critics turned right around and, you know, that's right. compared that, to Jackie Gleason and Tabletop. So, I mean, what are you going to do? You know, well, like, that's, that's the, the business, baby. That's and it, you know babe, it. You know? Uh, listen, Rob, a terrific performance in Tabletop. Uh, we wish you a long run at the American Place that's Theater. That's it? That's it. It's over with. I it goes thought, I like thought you know, this is, we, it went by so fast. Not one obscenity. Right. <laughs> no, no, no. We're, we're not a three-hour we're not a three hour show like you have or four, however long that thing goes out of the morning. Every, you know, all morning long, you're going to slip there. They're still it's talking about 26 it. 26 minutes, 47 seconds, and, and we we're out of there, out. baby. But this just flew by. <laughs> well, listen, you're welcome to come back anytime. Please. I'm not doing anything next week. <laughs> Every week. Good. All right, we'll plug, we'll plug Tabletop here on Theater Talk all the time. They don't great, do the great. Program. Thank you very much. Uh, but really, we urge you to see Tabletop. It's a great performance by uh, Rob Barlin and a terrific play. Thank you. Thanks for being our guest tonight on Theater Talk.